So good morning, active traders, and welcome to our Trading Week Ahead broadcast, coming at you live here from Colorado on Saturday, July the 16th, 2022. Now markets have bounced a little bit, and they're trying to hold steady, but we're still in a rallying a bear market downtrend mode. One thing that I do notice though with the S&P is that we are, instead of doing that continuous drop and a bounce and a drop, we've dropped and now we're consolidating. So that's the number one S&P note that I've got for you is we are in a consolidation range. You can like mark out a little box range here. Now we've not broken the downtrend until we get back over the 4150 previous peak. So we're still in a bear market downtrend, but now is a good time to, I think, start nibbling small size on swing trades in things that may start to recover. And we've got quite a few of them to look at, so we'll get underway soon. It was anyone else tra trading DraftKings yesterday? DKNG, it was a brilliant chart, by the way. DKNG, nice 40 Fed degree angle breakout all day long. We'll take a look at that and others in just a sec. But first, S&P key support level is obviously 3,700. Resistance is 3,950, right? Now we're still constrained in a box trading range. So for clarity, I'm gonna take a look at what the VIX is telling us. Now we had a big drop yesterday. Now I couldn't resist, I had to buy a whole boatload of UVXY yesterday into the close because what happens, <laughs> what happens when volatility drops to support? What almost always happens? Draw a horizontal line here, right? This is a key support level right near 23 and a half. So as long as our VIX stays north of 23, we're still bearishly inclined. That's a key support level for the VIX. If our CBO volatility index loses 23 support, then we have a bullish breakout to the upside. And you'll see that in the S&P. But if we stay above 23, that's my line in the sand. I'm an expert at this. The VIX, if, it, if we stay over the 23, we're still moderately bearishly inclined. If we get under 23, then we can start nibbling at breakouts for our swing trading positions to the long side. There's quite a few to look at. Some that come to mind immediately that we've been covering in the live room are, let's see, where is our marathon? It is Marathon. All the Bitcoin stocks like Marathon, Riot, Coinbase, et cetera, uh, BTBT and BITI, the, uh, the ETF, uh, now is my number one sector right now. Uh, healthcare is great if you have the deep pockets for things like uh, you know, United Health and Merck and Pfizer and all that. Well, Pfizer is not expensive, but anyway, Humana is good. So healthcare is the number one sector for breakout, for continuous strength. Semiconductors have shown relative strength as well. And the third one bringing up the rear is our, uh, our Bitcoin related instruments like Marathon. What I like is the one week, one week uptrend after huge sell-off, right? From 30 down to five. So that's a bit extreme and it's starting to see some high volume buyers in the house. So be sure to join my live trading room and I'll give you specific entries and tips and strategies for this and others. The other one, of course, is Riot. It's not as strong as Marathon, but it's still forming a consolidation base. It's hard to see, but that's a, who can name this pattern? I know it's hard to see with the gap in there, but what's that candlestick pattern? And again, be sure to learn candles exclusively from Steve Nissen at candlecharts.com. He's the expert and I learned so much and it works. So that's good. Anyway, what's that pattern? Yeah, Mira. Yeah, you got it. Hey, Stan. Hey, Wendy. Hey, Bill. Hey, Stefan. Hey, Ian. Yeah, it's a bullish engulfing. So that's one vote for going long, right? Now we have a few other things. We have price action. We have Western technicals. We have trading range in terms of price elasticity. Now, is there enough range in this to trade? Absolutely. If you're buying, here's another quick tip. For bottom fishing, I've traded millions of dollars worth of bottom fishing over the last 22 years. Uh, the biggest success correlate, the biggest factor related to successfully trading bottoms is don't. But the second most strong is big ranges. Uh, so in general, you'll get stopped out with a lot of small dead cap bounces that do false bounces and keep on going down if you trade narrow range instruments. The wider the trading range, the greater the profit potential, okay? Like I, my best pivot call, I think of the month was boil. I called B-O-I-L when it had dropped sharply. It was a few days ago, and then it did a spike up. We nailed the exact bottom. I made a lot of money trading that on the upside. 
uh, I trade daily live real money accounts in my live trading room, so be sure to join us. And I'll tell you exactly what I'm trading, when and where, and entries and exits ahead of time. Anyway, the point is, Riot starts to bounce. The range is big. So what we look for for pivots is big range. And operationalized range, well, I don't have percentages for you, but you want charts that have at least tripled or got cut in third or minimum cut in half. Okay, minimum 50% drop, preferably more like this. 23 down to five, may do a mean reversion pivot up to right under support or that's support resistance on this side of the chart when you're over near 12. So how many of you would like to double your money from six to 12 potentially? That would be a good trade setup. Risk reward numbers are really good. Maximum risk on this would be from here down to four, right? The price that proves the trade wrong would be $4 a share, right? That's the support. If we lose support, you got to take the stop because it could go down to 50 cents, right? So uh, you sell it all if it loses four, but uh, the reward potential from six to 12 is a multiple of that. So you got at least a, was that six to four is two and six to 12 is six. That's so a three to one risk reward, three to one risk reward. That's the kind of trade I like to take where the odds are clearly in my favor and we've got good, strong, intelligent signals like lots of you know, one year high green volume and it's coming off a consolidation base. So does that make sense for pivots? This one I'm trading. So what else do we have? Let's switch gears here to intraday charts. And I wanted to share with you a few really good ones. I don't know if anyone else is trading DraftKings yesterday, but that's a perfect day trading chart. Now, again, day trading charts for uh, uninformed amateurs that are bad are the under $10 low float stocks that people intentionally pick so they can front run them in a chat room. Now that works for the one, exactly one person, the guy running the chat room. <laughs> doesn't work for the rest of you because, you know, you and I, uh, well, at least you guys, you're not going to like run a chat room and front run. Uh, I don't front run anyone, uh, the members. So don't, don't learn from people that advocate trading under $10 low float stocks. That's terrible. The chat room operator makes money. They can make YouTube videos by making lots of money because they buy a few thousand shares and they announced a room full of hundreds of people. Hey, it's a long. And as soon as it runs up, they sell and they book a big profit. That only works for the trickster running the chat room. It doesn't work for the rest of us. You know, if you go off on your own and try and trade that kind of instrument, you'll just get killed. So do not trust anybody. Uh, listen to the Federal Trade Commission in terms of who they take disciplinary actions against and the SEC and the CFTC. Don't go with anybody who's been busted by the FTC. Just a quick word of the wise there. Uh, anyway, intelligent, high volume, continuous runs, however, like DraftKings, this is a really good one we covered for our live room members. Uh, throughout the last couple of weeks, it's been a really good volatile instrument. Ran from 11.3 up to just under 13. Now this chart highlights another technique that I cover daily, which is the use of whole numbers as support and resistance. So, you know, you had to say, Notice, please, even if you missed the first leg of the breakout, does everyone see we're clearly twelve is whole number support, right? Aha! Uh -huh. It's like a hidden one of those hidden puzzles. If you've ever done those on a you know, cell phone or a tablet or whatever, where you have the, the picture with hidden items in it that you got to go find, that that's this kind of pattern. And I find these for my traders daily because I, I'm an experienced trader. We always look to sell right under whole numbers and buy right over whole numbers. So if you had been long on the first leg of the breakout, I was, and I didn't catch that, but you would have sold near 1190 or at least trailed the stop close, the closer it got to 12. And then you get back in if it breaks 10, 20 cents above the whole number like this one did, right? 12, 10. And then again, you sell up right under the nearest whole number, 13. So you'd be selling up there near the 80, 90. That's a very, very valid, very useful strategy is in between whole numbers, the in between whole number strategy. And again, that's something that I teach exclusively at my live room. I'm still working on this page. I was working on it this morning, uh, trademastery.com forward slash summer success. I do have the room on sale for six months for just $6.95. I'm raising the room rates permanently uh, this weekend. Uh, so uh, this sale is good till the end of the month. So you got a week or two to figure it out. Uh, but it's just $6.95 for six months. It's still under like 150 months. So it's a really good price. Uh, and you can join me uh, and my, all my room members. We got so many new members have joined up. I've set aside 50 spaces, five zero spaces at that price. And so we'll be, uh, I'll be communicating that with you. For now, just bookmark the page. 
trademastery.com forward slash summer success. Summertime, bum, 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 bum. I can't sing, but I can trade. And I do every single freaking day. Anyway, what a chart. Does everyone see the profit potential and the validity of this kind of chart rather than like those crappy $3 stocks that run up like 80 cents and they crap out and they come back down uh, in two minutes? Those are really stupid to trade. You should not be trading stuff under $10 as a rule of thumb. Those are dangerous uh, with few exceptions. I was trading Clovis and PETZ. Those are a couple I like recently. CLVS, PETZ, and there's a couple others, but in general, you want to focus on charts between like $10 and $30 a share. So they're still relatively cheap. I don't cover things like Apple or Amazon or Netflix, really expensive things. I cover stuff like this. One of my smart traders, Ari, had also mentioned Citigroup. What a run. And he mentioned it way back when, I think it was like 47.50 or something like that, maybe 47. Anyway, I've got a lot of smart members in the live trading room as well. And we're all veterans of the trading wars. Uh, my, my best traders are guys who've been trading at least 10, 15, 20 years like me. And we've got a lot of us there in the room together sharing trade ideas. So trading the open my live room, run it since the year 2000, I think just 2000, 2001, uh, 20 years now, over 20 years I run the room. So anyway, this is a good chart to trade because it's got multiple points of range, okay? That's a great breakout. Natural gas long ETF boil, the opposite of cold, KOLD. Also a good runner here, 55 to 65, $10 run. Now this one doesn't have as much volume as I normally like, but it's still a good momentum runner. We cover Soxel daily as well. It did good on Thursday, did okay yesterday and others. One strategy that you want to memorize or get familiar with is trading stocks within related uh, sectors or stocks within the same sector. So for example, Citigroup was hot, so I pulled up the Wells Fargo chart being another banking stock, right? Just like if you're trading airlines, you might want to trade Air American, but you may also want to trade Delta, right? If you're trading Bitcoin stocks, you may want to trade Riot, but you may also want to trade MARI or MARA or Coin, Coinbase. So trading things within related instant within related uh, plays is good. And I couldn't resist buying a little bit of UVXY. I think I just got 400 shares because 1250 is cheap for it. It's very likely to bounce really soon. And when it get, this is an instrument where <laughs> when it looks terrible, that's the time to buy it because it almost always pivots back up, almost being the keyword, but frequently it pivots back up as you can see if you look at the daily chart. For buying strength, I like charts like DKNG. Now, what about this new news that a really smart trader Ari had mentioned? Uh, he sent me an email this morning, so I rushed out an email to you guys, and thanks, Ari, for that. Uh, single stock inverse uh, ETFs are out. I think they started with Tesla, which is probably a good one to short. Uh, if you want to short stocks, uh, but you can't because you're in a cash account or you're using a, a retirement account like a SEP, uh, you uh, no shorts for you, but but uh, the SEC announced uh, they approved just this past week, I think it is, uh, single stock inverse ETFs uh, and leveraged. Uh, so you can short stocks using the ETF without actually shorting the stock. You buy instead the corresponding leveraged uh, inverse ETF that goes the opposite chart pattern of the stock. So uh, yeah, I should say. And say it's opposite of going long the stock. It's the same. Uh, the point is, if it goes down, you can buy the ETF associated with that, and it should correspond to the uptick in the same way. The long, it should be inversely correlated. My take on it is because, as pattern day traders, we depend upon understanding <clears throat> trading ranges, price action, price elasticity, uh, and the size of gaps, and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to just watch and wait for the first few weeks of those. I'm not going to trade those unless there's some that are really liquid. The two things we're going to look for are liquidity in terms of high volume. That's really important. And also price elasticity with wide ranges. This type of chart is perfect. Big range, big volume, big profit potential. What we don't want to trade is, say, the single stock inverse ETFs that have low ranges or low volume. right? So, And since they're brand new, they're newly issued or coming out now, 
uh, we don't have any history on those. So it's like an IPO kind of a situation. You want to wait at least a few weeks to get some data and see which ones make sense. But uh, we will cover those absolutely in the live trading room uh, for you as well. The single stock, uh, inverse and leveraged ETFs. Uh, for, and also it's, I won't say the word safer, but I say it's a more conservative way, I think, to swing trade short. I've never swing traded short because I always get worried that, you know, the company might get some buyout offer overnight and the, the price spikes up against me if I'm short. So I, that's why I never hold shorts overnight. I day trade short, but I don't swing trade short. However, with the ETFs, uh, it may be an alternative way to hold overnight shorts. I don't know if it's going to be as much risk or not, so we'll have to see. But anyway, it's interesting. Hey, good point from TP saying if some of those start showing larger volume, he says it's kind of like short interest, which should be a short signal in itself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, the delta, day over day delta and volume, that's smart. So if the volume, say, on one day is here, but the volume's up, I use 30% higher. So let's just round up the volume's 1 million one day and it's 1.3 or 4 million the next day. That's, uh, and it continues, and the ETF is going up uh, with increasing volume. That would be a, a good signal to buy that instrument. So yeah, it's a smart idea. Good observation. All right, what else? I think that's about it. I don't have too much else to share. Um, I'm, I'm a man of few words. If I don't have anything to say, I don't feel compelled to, unlike other people, I don't feel compelled to fill the space just because the time's there. Uh, let me know if any questions. If not, I think we're gonna wrap. Um, a couple of, uh, st let's, well, okay, hit me up with your stocks. I, I say reluctantly, a big turnout today. Let's take a look at the dailies. Stocks that I like for pivot longs include Ford Motor Company and Disney, especially. One of my smart traders had asked about uh, the, this one. I like Ford on a pivot if it breaks, say, 12. Every whole number, I'm going to go long in Ford Motor Company because it came from 25. Now it got cut in half. It may meet us in the middle at 17, 18. So I'm going to start Martin Gillen into Ford Motor Company. A beat down high risk one that may pivot is Bed Bath and Beyond. I'm not going to touch this until it gets over six. I always have PayPal and Netflix. I don't like either of those as much as I like Disney. If Disney breaks back over 100, I'm going to buy Disney at 102. So you can see it came down from 160. So Disney may be a recovery play, but I'm not going to touch it till it gets over the 100 and specific that way to 102. So that's two pivot plays for you, Disney and the Ford Motor Company. And see, question from John, do I buy stock in these or buy calls and puts? I buy the equities. I, I, I'm a stock trader. I'm not an options guy. Because, you know, the way I figure it, you know, you got de premium decay is always there. And it's, it's like the, some of the, uh, like the leveraged inverse ETFs like UVXY, you've got decay or contango working against you. So. It's kind of like shooting a rifle. I find it hard enough to get price. If I have to get price and time right to hit the strike within a certain window, that seems to be even more difficult. So I, I, I trade the underlying. But you can, a lot of my traders are options traders, though, and they use my tips and ideas for their options trade. So if you're an options trader, don't let that discourage you. I just don't say, I'm going to hit the weekly strike at, you know, whatever, 1280, uh, you know, by next Friday, that kind of thing. So I don't talk options, talk, but we, we you can use them. Let's see what else. Oh, wow, a bunch of charts to ask. Hmm. Sorry, I missed a bunch of them. All these scrolling by. Let's see, GDX, Paya. Let's see. You know, what I like right now is the pullback in commodities, right? We've had such a sharp drop in things like lumber, oil, gas, and the rest of it. So I'm looking to go long. Again, short crude oil. It continues to go up. SEO, I've been trading this long, swing trading it because it's got a really good range. It's gone 18 to 20, as high as 28, hovering around 26 right now. Yeah, 26, 25, 90. So closing to 26. I like short crude. And despite its recent drop, I like some KOLD as well. because it had been trending up until it didn't, right? And dropped back all the way down from 40 to 20. Now this one is absolutely not for newer traders because the range is really big 
and risk reward is uh, it's a dangerous but could be very well uh, a good instrument we traded it back here it ran like 30 to 40. I made money trading this I was trading on the way up does anyone uh, anyone else trade that KOLD on that big remember it ran up it was like four points in a row or something it was a really big it was, a, it was really exciting it ran uh, it was like 25 28 to 35 or something before a pullback then it ran up to 41 then that was it for the day but uh, it had a ten dollar range for it which was really exciting for a thirty dollar instrument a ten dollar range uh, within a you know it was like 15 minutes it was really big anyway that was the most exciting that gets my vote for the most exciting breakout i've seen in recent history uh was a cold run it was uh, just a few weeks back anyway that instrument if it does recover i wouldn't buy it here yet but if it gets back over 30 i'm going to get into cold and seo i'm i'm always in and out of this i'm always dabbling with seo i want to get a big position on because That's a pivot long setup on an annual chart, right? A one year chart, you can see it's clearly resumed in the uptrend and it's lasted, you know, a month and a half here. So short crude has been working as the price of crude has dropped. SEO is the way to play the drop in crude price. Now, if only we could get, well, I won't be political, but anyway, the point is there's room for improvement in how we use oil and energy. Anyway, SEO is a good play for an upside move over 30. So I'm gonna scale in, I'm gonna start trading size and the short crude if we break at 30, 30 on the SEO ETF. So and again, exit target on that would be in the 50, maybe 55 range. So I'm looking for 18, 20 points out of that. So that's pretty good, right? We have to be patient. It may take a month to do it, but patience I'm not noted for, but it's got really good upside. So that's SEO and KLD has even more. Big run from 400 to 20. Any sign of strength, especially if it gets in, for this one I'm looking is I'm not going to trade size till this gets back over 40. So I'll dabble on any upside breakouts in KOLD, two-day, three-day highs, multi-day highs, but I'm going to scale if it gets over 40. And again, the Bitcoin stocks like Marathon, remember to say, I remember when this is back at like 30, 30 to 30, I say around 30, give or take, like 25, 30. Uh, that was a good trading range for it. Now it's all the way under $10 a share. I fully expect Marathon to recover, not way back up to where it was, but at least around 25. Uh, if I can double my money, start, I'm going to start scaling in size on MARA if it gets over 10. Nice whole number. So if it gets over the 10 and holds for at least three days, then I'll start trading size, at least one, two, three thousand shares, and hopefully double the money. Uh, my goal is to buy maybe right over 10, around 11 and 12 and then sell up at 18 or 19. So if I can get seven sticks out of it, seven points, that's the, the swing traders pivot play in Marathon. And I'll be walking on my live room to how that works as well. Remember I said this in a month or two, and I'll say, I told you so when it's up at 20, say, remember on Trading Week Ed, I said it'd be a buy down at eight bucks a share. Now it's 20, are you guys happy? Remember I said that, because I'm pretty good at spotting reversals. So I should be after all these years. Now, pot stocks, we blew it. I blew it. I, I got all excited with it on some rumor that they may decriminalize in some Senate bill or something next week. I had a big rally, uh, but I took stops on that. I lost money uh, trying to trade the breakout in pot stocks because they ran up and they looked beautiful one day and then they crapped out yesterday, right? So uh, I, mean, I did buy the bounce a little bit in Marathon and Tilray, especially. Uh, I'm sorry, Canopy Growth and Tilray. Uh, but CGC and Tilray, uh, they're still good plays if they do get above the whole numbers because of their previous trading ranges. We take a look at ACB, Aurora Cannabis. That's another one with a huge range, right? These are coiled for breakouts, right? These are really good charts to play. And I, I always trade in and out of them. There's a price that proves me right and a price that proves me wrong. When it proves me right, I double down and I scale in. When it proves me wrong, I get out quick with the small stop. That's how you know exceptionally good traders trade is. We're always looking for uh, risk reward where tiny risk but big reward potential. So this thing, highly speculative, but if it breaks a buck and a half or two, it may easily go to three or three and a half or four or five. So that's one in which one could potentially get a multiple ROI.
Look at Canopy. Now, the pot stocks have been terrible investments the last couple of years, but look at this from a high around 20 uh, just a year ago, right? One year ago is 20, and now it's near two or three. Right? Canopy closed at two and a quarter. Now, I think this may be oversold, but again, maximum downside is zero. So you got $2 of downside risk, but if I can triple my money and buy in the two, three, four region and sell up at the six, eight, nine, uh, 10 would be the best case exit, but I, I'd be happy buying over three and selling near five. So that's kind of the window of opportunity I, I believe exists. And this thing was is between three and five, maybe three and six. Uh, so that's canopy growth on any sign of a recovery. Now, I'm not a big advocate of catching falling knives, but when something has been cut down this far, this fast, oftentimes the you get a short squeeze, at least, that leads to some initial bounce. Uh, you, it's not going to ever, I, I doubt it'll recover way back where it was a year ago in the near future. But if it can, if I can double my money from three to six, hey, it's worth a shot, right? Like DraftKings. DKNT, that was that beautiful chart I showed you guys a few minutes ago, right? This is another, well, one of my top picks for a pivot is DKNG. Now, of course, live room members, I'll give you guys specific entries, which days to get in, which days to get out, how to manage your trades from start to finish, and all the hand-holding and answering of questions you may need. So I'm here to help. Uh, you have my word on it. So uh, DraftKings, I think, is a good buy-up at any whole number of every $2, of 14 16 18 uh, sell the 20, then buy the 22, 24, et cetera, sell the 30. So within $10 ranges, between 10 and 20, remember that's an advanced tip. We're at the low end of the 10s here, near 12 so or 13. So buying down here is fine, uh, but then tightening up a trailing stop as it gets close to 20, up near 18, 19. And if you can get $5 out of a, a $12 stock, that's a really good return on investment. So uh, this one is a one of my top picks, DKNG, for a pivot to the upside. It's held its consolidation base at 10 for months now, right? For the last uh, 12 weeks or so, DKNG has refused to go under 10, and now it popped really nicely yesterday, right? So, Now, the neat thing about my live room is I do all the heavy lifting for you guys. So I do all the tedious, and it is tedious. It's a pain in the, it's a royal pain in the rear, but... Uh, I do all the hard work, the heavy lifting for you guys. So I go out and I uh, visually scan all these hundreds of charts and I find the handful, like five or six, that actually makes sense. And at least that I'm going to trade uh, and tell you how I'm trading them and some ideas that you might want to put to work for your own self. So just a reminder, I do have this uh, sale for the next week or so until the 31st. So that's two weeks. Okay, so till the end of the month, uh, you can get six months access to the live room for just $6.95. I'm raising the roommates permanently this weekend, so I'll be back in 1997 annually and 200 per month on the regular. I'll probably even go up from there, like 24.95 annually and maybe two and a quarter, 249 monthly. So I'm raising the rates to the live room permanently this weekend. It's inflation, hey. Uh, inflation, you know, rises, so I've got to raise my room rates to cover uh, my costs as well. So. And just because I want to, and I have so many members. Now, the neat thing is you're locked in and you're grandfathered in at whatever rate you're in at. So your rate is guaranteed to never increase. Uh, once you are in and you stay subscribed, you're in at that rate for as many years as you want. Other traders have been with me on and off since 2001. So uh, a lot of loyal people with me. A uh, really big room, too. So thanks for, to all of you for your trust and, uh, and working together, right? I like to be friendly and professional and no BS and a straight shooter and give you good you know, tips and ideas and insights on what to do versus what not to do. And I do all the, like I said, all the heavy lifting for you. So I go out there and find all these charts and then find a few of them, like three, four, five, six, that really makes sense for swing trades, as well as our day trading picks of the day, like uh, DraftKings, City, Wells Fargo, and others from yesterday. So anyway, the sale is at trademastery.com forward slash summer success. I'm still working on the page. I'll put in some bonuses and some other stuff in the next week or so, but at least bookmark the page, trademastery.com forward slash success. Hey, John, what time's the live room? I'm there as early as 8.30 in the morning, even earlier on uh, on like CPI and PPI days, uh, but we're there from 8.30 till 11 in the morning, so really full coverage. And I stay around later, of course, if the market's still running, I'll stay around as long as the market's hot, but usually we uh, wind things up at 11.00. And then I also come back for an end of day, a short squeeze or breakout session between 3.30 and 4 every single day, Monday through Friday. 
Uh, so that way, if we have end of day runners, whether things like my UVXY pivots or breakout stocks that are running into the close, I cover those for you guys as well. Specific entries. Unlike any other room in the world, I give specific entries. You can see right there the that rightmost column over here. I give specific price action entries posted before the opening bell uh, for everything that we cover. So that way you can develop, develop a trading plan with specifics, which is really important. That's what separates the men from the boys or the real traders from the BSers is I'm good enough to, I've been doing this for two decades and I trade millions of dollars worth of stocks uh, and ETFs. Actually, I trade more ETF volume than I do stocks, but I trade them both. Uh, I give you specific entries ahead of time and live in the markets when, it's, when I think it's ran up far enough and it's going to drop, I say, you know, sell, 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 cash it in. And you'll hear a boom. And I'll say sell it all now or trail a stop within 10 cents of the current market for that instrument because it's got up to a whole number and we're up 80 cents in the money. Let's sell it all now and book a profit. So I give you specific entries like a Wall Street squawk box and exits. And yeah, I do explain how to trade pre and post market. Yeah, I often cover the swing trade. I'll often cover swing trade ideas right at four o'clock. It may stay around till, you know, 410 or even 415 or something. I stay around a little bit after the bell uh, many days to tell you what I'm swing trading. I'll often put on the trades in front of you guys uh, because that's a good decision time to decide when to either scale in or scale out of your current swing trade. So I do post-market trading tips as well as pre a lot of pre-market coverage from 8.30 to 9.30. I'm there every single day. So they're from 8.30 till 11, but you get a full hour of pre-market coverage. Colorado time, well, let's see. It's 10.30 here, so what is that? I think it's 6.30 in the morning. Yeah, 6.30 in the morning. We start at 6.30 Colorado time, 8.30 in the morning Eastern time. It's your thing, Heidi. So... Anyway, give it a shot. I think you'll find it useful. I, I like to cover good stocks with uh, good solid trade setups and explain them uh, with you know annotations and entry and exit tips and ideas and make it work. All right, we're over time, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap. Uh, do give me a shot. I've been doing this a long time, and hopefully I can help you. And one thing that I've got in the works is putting together some instructional videos for how to make the most out of the live room, too. We've had quite a few people ask for additional help and tips and guidance, so I'm in the process of uh, doing that is putting together uh you know how to videos for how to set up your charts and how to follow the alerts uh, for those who may need the help for more for newer traders but uh, that's coming as well so anyway go ahead and join now while it's still on sale and i'll see you guys in the room come next week trademastery.com forward slash summer success and hope these ideas have been helpful remember what i said about the uh, bitcoin stocks uh, healthcare sector and the broad market and you should be in good shape so take care and i'll see you guys next time bye for now All right. Have a safe weekend. Stay safe and best wishes. Bye for now.